welcome back my friend this is part 3 of this series and if you haven't yet checked the part 1 and part 2 then I would highly encourage you to go to the description of this video and get the links for part 1 and part 2 so with that let's start the part 3 of this video let's quickly refresh what we did last time it was uh, very simple we tried to uh, segregate our uh, variables into numerical features and categorical features so today uh, what we are going to do is into look into how to handle the categorical features uh, previously in our part 2 we handled the numerical features where we tried to see which features uh, are more you know um, influencing the sale price if you can see the last row here uh, the light pixels are actually the highly correlated ones uh, which which influences the sale price today we are going to look into the categorical features which is more influence on the sale price and for that uh, we have a method called ANOVA which means analysis of variance and before we jump onto the you know complex codes of uh, you know calculating ANOVA what we want to do is simply solve a, a very straightforward problem by hand and see how ANOVA works okay so in simple terms what does ANOVA actually calculates for us right again it's a statistical measurement where we want to see that the variance between these uh, uh, columns and the variance within the column what is the total variance when I combine both of them okay now there will be variance of course between this value this value this value which we call it like the variance within and there will be variance between these columns like right and we want to see that as well and in in the terms of uh, if i have to mathematically put it uh, ANOVA actually means uh, the sum of squares between which means between these columns yeah and uh, it the ratio of the sum of squares between divided by the sum of squares within okay within when I say it means the variance in this co columns individual columns and when I say between it means between these columns now these terms again has to be divided by something called as degree of freedom which we'll of course see and calculate as well so right now uh, let's not worry about the degree of freedom at this point of time okay so first let's um, see what problem are we actually trying to solve here so uh, we did a lot of experiment and found that uh, beer 1 beer 2 and beer 3 has some significance in becoming a data scientist uh, wow <laughs> that could be so interesting you know if we could uh, drink beer and become a data scientist okay so if I have to prepare a null hypothesis on this one and I say h0 then mathematically I would say the mean of the population b1 which is beer 1 is equal to mean of population of beer 2 and mean of population of beer 3 by the way this is just a sample we are interested in the mean of the population of course right so according to null hypothesis I would say that none of this beer has any significant you know influence on becoming a data scientist okay and the alternate hypothesis would be mean of b1 of course not equal to mean of b2 not equal to mean of b3 so that means you know what I am trying to uh, uh, prove here is that beer 1 or beer 2 or beer 3 has some significant influence on becoming a data scientist in order to calculate the the degree of freedom of course I will explain how to do that uh, we need few information first is how many columns do we have here or also known as how many groups of data we have here and we denote it by M and in this case we have three one two and three and how many data points do we have so I can see that we have three records so we'll just use three at this point of time and then eventually we'll see you know these two information will be very much helpful in calculating the something called as degree of freedom 
uh, if you want to study more about it then i would highly encourage you to google this term and you know try to see you know, what does degree of freedom mean and all those things uh, right now we are only interested in calculating them okay so the first term that we are going to calculate is called as sum of squares total um, so we are basically going to see how each of these values yeah are far from its mean from the mean of the entire data set okay so in order to calculate the mean of the entire data set we need um, the first of all need to sum all these values okay and we can just say sum of all these values and divide by the total number of terms so we have three by three so we have nine values so we get a mean of four okay now how to how do we calculate the sum of squares of the total so all we're going to do is subtract four from all these terms and take a square of each of those terms okay so how can we do this is uh, we can do it manually by three minus four and square of it so which is one two minus four it's two and two square is four and one minus four is 3 and no, I'm taking the absolute value of course and 1 minus 4 is minus 3 and square of that is 9 yeah similarly I continue with this and 5 minus 4 is 1 and 3 minus 4 is again 1 and 4 minus 4 is 0 so I don't have to add it and then I see 5 minus 4 again it's 1 and 6 minus 4 is 2 and 2 square is 4 and 7 minus 4 is 3 and square of 3 is 9 so we get this as the total term and I can just maybe put a equal sign here and see the total yeah so we see that uh, the sum of square total is is equal to 30 okay so the next calculation that we are going to do is called sum of squares within which means how far each of these individual values are far off from its mean right so in that case we need the mean of this column which is uh, 5 plus 1 6 6 divided by 3 it's 2 and mean of this column would be 5 plus 3 8 8 plus 4 12 and divided by total number of terms which is 3 so 12 by 3 is 4 and b3 would be 5 plus 6 11 plus 7 18 18 divided by the uh, mean of this uh, uh, so total number of term 3 so 18 by 3 is 6 the mean of each group uh, we can straightforward uh, you know calculate the uh, sum of squares within it's very simple so all we do is 3 minus 2 okay i'm not going to type everything 3 minus 2 is 1 and 1 square is 1 plus 2 minus 2 is 0 so we don't have to do anything here and 1 minus 2 is 1 and 1 square 1 is 1 so that is for the first group for the second group we have 5 minus 4 is again 1 3 minus 4 again 1 and square of it is of course 1 and 4 minus 4 is 0 we don't have to do that anything again 5 minus 6 1 square is 1 and 6 minus 6 is 0 so we don't have to consider that and 7 minus 6 again is 1 so what we are getting here is sum of squares within is is equal to 6 uh, straightforward uh, simple calculation so we are going to uh, you know subtract this value from the total mean and repeat it for all the terms so in this case we can simply write um, three times because we have three records so we can say three times the difference between this mean and this four so two minus four is two and square of that is four right so it is equal to 12 and similarly we can you know repeat the same process uh, three times four minus four zero so we don't have to do anything about it here and for the final one we have six minus four which is two and two squared is four so basically we get three times four again 12 so the sum of squares between uh, in these three groups uh, we get 
something as 12 plus 0 plus 12 and which is nothing but 24 now interestingly if you see here this term 24 and this term 6 so basically your sum of total uh, sum of squares total is, is equal to sum of squares between plus sum of squares within okay so let's calculate the degree of freedom for within and then we'll calculate the degree of freedom for between so if i just name it as degree of freedom within then it will be uh, number of records minus one so in this case we have three records minus one which is two and we have three columns so it will be six for the within and if we have to calculate degree of freedom for between then we have you know how many groups do we have we have three then we have three minus one and which is equal to two now i have put in the description below uh, a detailed explanation of how to uh, calculate the degree of freedom and what does it mean by degrees of freedom for so for detailed analysis you can just browse to the uh, url below all right so now we have all the necessary ingredients to calculate the f statistics and uh, for that in the numerator we will have the sum of squares between divided by the degree of freedom for between this whole thing then is divided by the sum of squares within divided by the degree of freedom within so this will come out to be around uh, sum of squares between is 24 divided by the degree of freedom between is 2 which is 12 and this comes around uh, sum of squares within is equal to 6 and divide by degree of freedom within is 6 so finally your f statistics f statistic is equal to 12 divided by 1 right and it comes out to be 12 now from another perspective how do i know whether 12 is a good number a bad number a high number or low number so in order to find out that we have to understand something called as critical value right uh, in other terms i would say what is the probability you know a minimum probability that we you know uh, if we know we can reject the null hypothesis or accept the null hypothesis right so in this case we are going to say that you know uh, a critical value alpha say is equal to 10 percent right um, so uh, based on that we will see what is the critical value for the f score and depending on that we, we will either consider to accept or reject the null hypothesis so now we have to use a f distribution table to find out the critical value okay for the given degrees of freedom so um, in the degrees of freedom uh, within we know it was six and for degrees of freedom for between it was two so in the numerator it was two so we take this value here two and in the bottom we had degrees of uh, freedom within which was uh, six so we have six here so the common value that we get is 3.46 all right now we come back here and we get the critical f value is 3.46 so what does it mean is this value is way less than this value it signifies that we have to uh, reject the null hypothesis and in other language it would mean that yes in fact there is a significant difference uh, and in contribution to becoming a data scientist so finally we come to a conclusion that you know one of we haven't done that analysis yet but we can say that the, the individual drink or different type of drink has in fact have different influence on becoming a data scientist so earlier our hypothesis was that none of this drink has any significance impact on becoming a data scientist but that is not true so we have to reject the null hypothesis so now coming to the point you know why are we even you know bothered about doing ANOVA uh, the reason being if we go back to our problem statement right in um, 
uh, the how predicting the housing price for numerical features it was easy for us to use the correlation matrix or correlation calculation for finding the you know, importance of the columns but in case of categorical data we needed some matrix uh, so that you know we can identify which features categorical features have more influence on the sale price and because of that it was very necessary to understand the ANOVA method because that's what we are going to apply onto the categorical features to do the correlation all right so in our next video uh, we are going to look into um, how to apply ANOVA method now that your concepts are clear uh, uh, that's what we have covered in this video uh, we will apply that in in our data set next we are going to do correlation analysis for the categorical data Till then, have a nice day and see you in video 4.